Hello, everybody. I'm Kristen. And I'm Rachel. And this is So I'm Watching Only Murders in the Building, Season 2, Episode 4. Here's looking at you. Two fun pieces of news. This got nominated for a handful of Emmys today. And we already got a Season 3 greenlit. Yay! So, big thumbs up. Very exciting. Yes. Um... Moving on from that, this was kind of a packed episode. It was. Like, a lot of stuff happened. Mm-hmm. Um, we met Lucy. Love her. Would Very love fun. To have more of her. We'll see. She's absolutely been living in the walls of the building. Yeah. For sure. Since the night Bunny died. We also uh, got Theo and Teddy Demas back. Mm-hmm. They are on house arrest, out on bail, awaiting trial. That's got to be so awkward. And I feel yeah. like they probably should have let the gang know like our friend the detective yeah. should have been like hey so like hmm, they're coming home yeah so i mean what did i I don't remember if we like actually got a resol like um full information like i theo is like gonna be on trial for the murder of chloe or whatever right or zoe yes and i'm sure that the grave robbing is just such a lesser yeah. thing than murder. Yeah. But then, so I guess Teddy is probably the grave robbing and then like... Accessory to murder. Accessory to murder. Yeah. Okay. So that's fine. So it's not going to go great. No, no. <laughs> um, and then did I already say we also got Jan back? Yeah. Just at the very end, but I think that's going to continue, which I'm super pumped about. I am too, but... She seems as crazy as ever. Oh, cr- complete crazy putty. <laughs> So I just love Amy Ryan a lot. Mm -hmm. She's in a really, really excellent movie called Gone Baby Gone. And um, she also has an extended run on The Office Mm. as uh a romantic interest for Michael. Mm -hmm. Um, And tons of other shit. I just, I really like Amy Ryan. For not having really seen like full episodes, I know a lot about The Office. (laughs) So I started, I put it on today. I I finished rewatching Abbott Elementary and I put it on today and it was a struggle. Really? It's it's good and it's like the parts that are good are good Mm -hmm. but it's sort of like how we talk about Schitt's Creek where it's like everything is golden except for Chris Elliott yeah and so it's sort of like there's too many elements that are like Chris Elliott oh no I'm like every time and especially season one is like so cringy and like I just feel very okay with yeah. not having seen it. I'm I'm fine. I'm I mean, I'm okay with being to. I'm okay with being like a Parks and Rec person. Yeah. That's, that's fine. fine. Um so anyway, I love Amy Ryan. Moving on from that. Um okay, so the biggest deal is that Lucy comes back in this episode. I think it's great. We both like the actress, um, Zoe Coletti. She's a lot of fun. She's really cute. She came in real hot at the beginning. She's Gen Z. She's too Gen Z. <laughs> she's I, I just know I think Gen Z is just very Gen Z. She's too much Gen Z. Mm-hmm. Um, but they basically, they throw Mabel at her to be like, and she's like, is it because I'm a girl? And Charles is like, no, it's because you're young. I like, she's talked to me about so many things and I already don't know what she's saying. That part's hilarious. She just sort of talks a ton of nonsense, but she mentions that like Mabel is like still like a cult icon. Still, oh, yeah. it's still like what was a bloody Mabel mm-hmm. is still going around. Um, that's super fun. They find the murder weapon in their apartment in Charles's apartment. Charles's apartment, but it's Oliver's knife. Yeah. Which was a well? Oh God! What was it? It was a wrap gift. Mac Mac beats. Mac beats uh-huh. with vanilla ice. Mac, the Scottish play <laughs> with vanilla ice. I love it. Yeah. It's hilarious. It's so stupid. Uh, um, so, I want to know who played Lady Macbeth or Lady Macbeat in like the nineties. Yeah, I feel like it'd have to be like uh, one of the like the supermodels. Sure. Like Linda Evangelista. So bad. Yeah. On Broadway. <laughs> uh, off, off Broadway. Off, off, off Broadway. Broadway. Fine. For sure. Regardless, the fact that it is Oliver's knife in Charles's apartment, the painting's been found in Charles's apartment, Bunny was found in Mabel's apartment, so it is coming around that it's going to be all of them, kind of. Mm-hmm. I am... So I'm less sure about my idea that it's um, Oscar's dad. Just because they do seem to be getting equally framed. Yeah. Like, Bunny was found, like, Bunny's body was found in Mabel's apartment. 
but everything else has been related to the other two. Yeah, I don't know. I so still, I, like, I still, I'm just, I don't know. I have no idea. Also, somebody in our comments said that it's um, Cara Delevingne, that it's Alice. And first of all, I'm not discounting it. It could easily be. She seems a little crazy. But we got a glimpse of the full body of, yeah, of the person, and it's way too big for Cara Delevingne. Yeah. And second of all, I would need a lot of backstory for that. Mm -hmm. So my other theory now that I have absolutely no framework or backup for at all, and it was only because of the way the person turned with their feet, uh, uh -huh. is Jane Lynch, Charles's <laughs> stunt double. Because there's no way she got called for the new Brazos. You know what I mean? Did she turn her feet like that when she was on? It's just a very Jane Lynch way to like move around and turn and stuff. But what a weird thing. So weird. Thing. I'm not I'm not claiming it as like a favorite yeah. thing or anything, but I'm just saying I think it's if they do the legwork, mm -hmm. it's a possibility. I don't know. I feel very much like I'm playing a mm -hmm. game of Clue. Yeah, and I have that, and I have no fucking idea. No idea. None whatsoever. I was never good at that game. Yeah, my my like my top idea is still Oscar's dad, the yeah. super, the super of the building. But we also haven't seen him again since that one episode. So mm -hmm. I don't know. And the sneeze was very important. It yeah. seemed particular. Yeah. I don't know. Howard seems a little too, I don't know, Evelyn or not Evelyn. I feel like Howard could be a little stabby stabby, but I don't know. I, I, I also I don't know. I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. I'm just having a good time. I also think Howard is a little huskier than yeah. that silhouette was. Yeah. I, I have no idea. Yeah. None whatsoever. Regardless, Lucy saw the person. Mm -hmm. in the, so there's tunnels all through the building. Mm -hmm. And Lucy knows about them because she has very obviously been living there. Um, she skipped out on her mom's wedding. She was supposed to be a bridesmaid. She and Charles have been texting for like a while. Um, I don't know. I, it's like a lot of, it's a really fun, good backstory. And I'm glad we finally met Lucy that we Me didn't too. just like forget about her. Like yeah. it was only a season one thing. Uh, Nina had well went into labor because they went to try to get it out of her that she wanted to kill Bunny because they creep on Nina's apartment in through all the walls. Yes, and, and they see that she has architecture plans for the Arconia with this horrible space glass thing on top of it. Real bad. How is that going to generate income? I have no fucking idea. Like, presumably, there's going to be something to do inside of it, but like, what the hell? It's ugly. It's like. It's one of those things where it's like, because I don't live there, I kind of think the bean is cool in Chicago. No, the bean is, you the know? Bean is cool because you can walk in it and like, I, it's in a park. It's, yeah. It's cracked it's, up. It's different. But, but it's it, like. It, it is. It, I feel like they are calling, um, or trying to make the comparison to whatever that new thing is in New York that everyone fucking hates. Uh, um, I forget what it's called, but it's like the building and it like goes like this. I kind of like that building. Yeah. So I like cool architecture. I like the new World Trade Center. I like the sparkly lights on the Eiffel Tower. I like the pyramids outside the Louvre. I'm maybe a sucker tourist, <laughs> but I, I like all those things. But for me, but this is this hideous. Is, this is bad. And to put it on on like a private building, like yeah. a private residence building. It's not like like the World Trade Center is an office building, yeah. you know, and like. The Bean, like you said, is in a park. The pyramids at the Louvre are in a public, you know, tourist attraction anyway. Mm -hmm. The lights on the Eiffel Tower don't really, you know, it's not impeding anybody's like ability to live. But it's like you're going to keep your residents from being able to go out on the roof, which yeah. is like the top floor's like privilege, mm -hmm. I've always thought. And so it's like, it's also just like, it's not, it's just like a, like an oval. It's like not even cool. <laughs> It's so weird. It just would look very disjointed. And I aesthetics I, wise. Oh, aesthetics wise for sure. And I also just I I like need proof on how that's going to like yeah, I don't, be, be profitable. Is, yeah, I don't I don't under <laughs> I don't understand. I, have no idea. I don't get it at all. But whatever, Nina. But yeah. So they both she and her husband, Jared, I think his name was. Yeah. But baby daddy, they did not confirm nor deny that this man was her husband. Well, sure. Pro probably the father of the baby. Basically, they were 
like, this is why Bunny had to go. And I think Nina is a red herring. I think there's no way that Nina killed Bunny. I agree. I agree. It's too early. It's like the Demises, like, where, like, it was, like, halfway through season one where you think that Teddy and Theo are the ones that, um, that killed Tim Kono, and it's like, no, they're doing something else illegal, Mm -hmm. but they are not the murderer. So it's like, Nina is only guilty of having bad taste and in being, architecture and being power hungry and power hungry. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, while they're there, they're getting all up in her face and they're like, we know you did it. And like, just to confess and there you, Jared can't help you out of this now or whatever. She, her water breaks and she goes into labor. Mm-hmm. So. And then, um, Charles is trying to calm her down, talking through her labor. And, um, <laughs> he's like, Look at she's squeezing a wet tennis ball. Well, Mabel washed it. <laughs> yeah, just thank God. for her. Um, they but, bring her this basket of really ill advice, like Winnie's blanket and a can of vegan tuna and baby oil. And, yeah, really <laughs> weird. so weird. Um, but so she's like, "What if I'm a bad mom?" And Charles is like, "You won't be a bad mom." Hey, look at this picture. You know, tell me who that is. And she's like, "She was my mom. She took care of me." Yeah. Blah blah blah. And then she was like, "I really wish Bunny was here. She was so excited yeah. to see this kid." And then she was like, you get that motherfucker. You get when you get him, you get him in the room with me and I'll fucking kill that. Yeah, yeah. went went hard. So there's just there's just no way it was Nina. I guess there's a universe where it's Jared, but oh, I would yeah. need a little more backstory for Jared. Same. Cause like Same. the frame, like the tallness of the, yeah. the man that we see work or the person that we see worked, but mm. I just don't I I don't yeah. know. Well, and apparently Theo is angry. Yeah. But the person in the tunnels responded to a noise. Yes. So I don't think it can be Theo. No. Mm -mm. So they had a really good, uh, he, uh, Theo and Teddy had a really good conversation too, which because Oliver is recording it, we don't really get Theo's side of the conversation because he's signing. I love how they do this on this show. It is fantastic. So good. So, but basically, Teddy is like, everything I've ever done is for you to protect you. It's all I'm trying to do now. And he basically is like, you're killing me. Mm -hmm. Like, and he has apparently gotten his own lawyer, like, away from Teddy. So I don't really know how that's going to go. On the note of translating things on television, I saw a tweet this morning that absolutely infuriated me. And it basically was like, it had the brackets and it was like speaks in Italian and it was like tell me what the fuck they're saying don't just tell me they're speaking in Italian and I was like you're not supposed to know what they're saying if are it, you fucking kidding if me if it just says speaks foreign language or like whatever because you could see like signing and mouthing was yeah. the thing on this you're not supposed to know what they're saying right that's the whole point it happens I, especially and, and a lot of the time it's supposed to be alienating yes for the for the viewer and the person who is like if you have a point of view character in the thing you're like Oliver in this scene mm-hmm. Oliver can't sign mm-hmm. he shouldn't know what Teddy is saying or Theo is saying so we shouldn't know what Theo is saying well that was the whole thing with um Spielberg's version of West Side Story and mm, why all they, the Spanish yes yeah. because mm-hmm. it was supposed to be you know, we as the American audience yeah. or like the New York audience, the English speaking audience, yeah. like could it not to say that like the Puerto Ricans in New York are not American. That's not what I mean at all. But English speaking people who are not bilingual, yeah. it was supposed to put us in the situation of the people from Puerto Rico and Cuba and all yeah. of that, that like have no fucking idea what we're saying. And also I thought that was brilliant. Also, I think it's meant to be alienating to the white characters Correct. in the movie as yes. well. I, I just like get over it yeah it's like you're not supposed to know because it's at the very beginning of outlander there's so much of it Mm -hmm. because claire gaelic (laughs) because claire is our point of view character and she does not speak scottish gaelic right like it so that was a tangent and i know it but i was furious this morning when Mm -hmm. i saw that so i was like absolutely not because i mean but that's very on point with that with the scene though because the whole time i was like it almost made me want because i've always wanted to learn american sign language and i know a little bit but not enough Mm -hmm. um but i just thought it was it 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 kept me in the moment but also made me fascinated with how they were translating the scene because us as the viewer through martin short you were exactly right Mm -hmm. with him videotaping he doesn't he has no idea 
So I I just thought it's master or I think it's masterful. I like, agree. The way that they did it. I agree. Just completely. to completely like <laughs> explain yeah. what you just said. No, hundred percent. Right there with you. So where should we go from there? Oh, well, um, Charles has a day on set mm-hmm. uh, the, for the new Brazos thing. It's moving forward. Um, they are getting ready to shoot and then they wheel out. <laughs> well, he, see, he makes a speech that like keeps going and everybody is just like trying to get down to business, at which I understand, you know, film and TV sets are a well-oiled machine for the most part. And even if they're not, you have times and stuff that you have to get like your stuff done. But also you brought back this legacy actor. Let him make a speech. Let like him a, have his moment. Like a two minute speech. Let yeah. him make a two minute speech. And so then they bring out this wheelchair because he's been injured somehow. And he also has a touch of dementia. <laughs> and he's like, what? And they're like, yeah, just because of this whole like this murder the writers need to be able to write you out if you go to prison. And he's like, I'm not going to prison. Yeah. And that, my whole thing is like, that's a little lazy because I mean, couldn't you just be like, well, he had a heart attack. Sure. Very yeah. much kind of like House of Cards where it's like, well, oh no. Oh no. He had a heart attack. <laughs> you wish he was still here. <laughs> okay. What else do we have to talk about? Um, Will is directing a right. little kids play and he is asking <laughs> Oliver. Uh, Oliver for help. He is like in the weeds. Yeah. In a way that I don't think he should be. So it's also the Wizard of Oz which feels like it should be a really easy production mm-hmm. to put on. It's got a, everyone knows it. It's got like six or seven built-in musical numbers. Mm-hmm. You don't have to really do anything. And then Oliver is like make the fattest kid the lion. Don't worry about the tin man. No one cares. I care. I like the Tin Man. And he just gives him like three pieces of advice. And he's like, I really can't right now, but like, I'll call you later. And so after he sees the Teddy and Theo scene and Charles has that really beautiful speech about motherhood, he basically is like, okay, well, I have to go. And he goes to like help his kid, which is cute, but also like, Will. Yeah. Get out. It's, it's kid. They're little kids too. They're like maybe eight. Yeah. It's, just start just doing this. Lots of jazz friends. hands. Hey, friends. Hey, let's <laughs> let, who can stand on the yellow brick road the best? It's Whoever like, does it the best gets a, gets a toy at the end. Just bribe them. Just bribe them or scream yeah. at them. I think it's like really, he, he just, I don't know. There was something about it where I was like, you have your own kids. I feel like you should be able to handle. Also, did you not think about that before you do that? I, I am decent with children. I would never agree to direct a child's play ever I'm in my life. Not decent with children. I would rather die. <laughs> yeah, I don't. This is why I'm not a teacher. Yeah. Teachers, I appreciate all of the work that you do. Mm-hmm. You do God's work. So I much. could never, will never, it will never be me. Definitely. But not. thank you. Appreciate you. So I think that is mostly it at the end. Oh, Howard comes to their apartment just out of nowhere. And they're like, Nita, hit me. Or he's like, Nita, hit me. And then it's just like, bye. And then left. Yeah. I don't know. Fucking Howard. Yeah. I don't, I'm just, I don't know. If it's him, I'm going to be a little mad. Yeah. I don't think that's right. Oh, uh, well, Charles has... Charles makes about two hundred thousand dollars a year because he he recorded he Hasselhoffed his way through the eighties and he recorded a song called Angel and Flip Flops and they um, sample the Pitta Putta Pitta Putta in a lot of rap songs and apparently it was huge in Germany. I think it's hilarious. That picture of Steve Martin is real, for, like from the sixties or seventies. Mm. That with the hair and everything. Steve Martin in a chambray shirt. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. So hot. He's handsome. He is handsome. He's not, he is like very low on the totem pole for me, but him in a chambray shirt from like the 90s. (laughs) Yeah. You know, we should watch, there's this movie called LA Story. Mm. We should watch that. Add it to the list. Yeah, let's do it. Um, Yeah, but that is mostly it. Really fun episode. And like I said, at the very end, um, he puts Lucy in a car to go back to Connecticut to her mom. I don't think she's going to. I think she's going to stay. Um, And then... He looks at his phone and he has all these unknown calls. And so he goes to the prison and he sees Amy Ryan and he, or Jan and he's like, I need your help. And she's like, oh, I've missed you. She's got the crazy eyes. So crazy, Penny. We'll see. Yep. I'm interested. Me too. 
And this is, are we doing eight or is it 10? I think it was 10 last season, I think. We're doing 10. So we're almost halfway through. So, all right. Cool. We will be back next week. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.